pet peeves, do they help you or harm you? Pet peeves like getting mad in traffic. Just going, oh, I hate you for getting in front of me. I just can't stand it. That was a used to be a, an issue with me. Until I really examined it and thought, all right, how many times have I been in a situation where I really needed to get over and maybe I cut them off too soon or, or something that wasn't truly intentional. I just was misjudging where I needed to be. So should I really be mad at that person that I don't know that's doing it back to me? Or are they, are they really being intentionally harmful and trying to disturb my day? I, I don't know. Mm, it greatly depends on the circumstance in which you're putting in road rage. Where we live in, in East Texas, we occasionally haul things with big trucks and trailers. And when somebody pulls out in front of me and I'm fully loaded with, a, say, a load of hay where you have 25 bales of hay that weigh 2,000 pounds a piece and you're going down the road and somebody in a little car cuts you off, those brakes don't work the same way. So I'd say in some circumstances, road rage is not necessarily appropriate, but that can have negative consequences and effects that people don't think about. Those are generally the times where I get most angry is that when somebody sees or does something that is directly harmful to them and me, that is when I have a problem with road rage. Not necessarily when somebody gets over and they don't wave. Those, are, those aren't the things that annoy me. All right, so let, let me probe you on this. So if you, most people, even in East Texas where we have a lot of ranchers and farmers and rural people, a good percentage of them still don't pull trailers. They don't understand that they're not pulling out in front of just a regular car that can just stop on a dime. They don't get it. They've never done it. So it's really their fault if we end up, you know, smashing into the back of them and throwing them into a ditch because they pulled out in front of us and there was no way for us to stop. That, that is a source of aggravation, but I'm not sure if that qualifies as the same as or, or as a justification for us to get mad because when we get mad and we go, oh, F you, you know, you're my waste, uh, why'd you do that? Well, now we're creating all these chemicals outraging and bursting into our bodies and causing ourselves to be in this temporary bad mood, which sets the stage for the next few minutes of our life. It seems like we should do that, uh, that emotional martial art that is just, let me just pass you on by. You know, as long as it didn't cause me to, you know, harm myself and you. All right. They just don't know. They just don't know. So can I be mad at somebody for just not knowing? That's the question. See, that's when it gets complicated of the old thing of the golden rule, treating others as you would have them treat you. You would think that you can see that big truck and trailer. You would think that a person would be smart enough to realize that that is putting my life in danger and the life of not only the guy in the car, but other people that might be beside them. So if you have a double stack row of hay and you hit somebody because they were inconsiderate, those things can have far reaching ramifications. If that top bell falls off because you got an accident and you're going down the road at only 30 miles an hour, and you got 2000 pounds of hay falling from what's basically a two story building onto someone else's car that might just be passing. I think there is a justification for aggravation and anger there. Should it let it upset your entire day? 
probably not if it wasn't necessary, necessarily a problem, but I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, that guy just caused me and my family and a bunch of other people harm because they were inconsiderate. So to have that as a pet pee under the right circumstances, I think is appropriate. But then you can go into the thing of, have you ever driven anywhere else? Like if we've driven in Rome or Buenos Aires, people just get in front of you for no reason, just in a car. But no, there's hardly any car wrecks because everybody's used to people driving like that. So being cut off is not necessarily a problem. Where it becomes a pet peeve and something that directly affects me is when it can directly affect me. We're not talking about just a little fender bender because you're going you know, 15 miles an hour and a moped cuts in front of you. I'm talking about from my angle and I think about it with big truck drivers all the time. Those guys in those big trucks, that's a stressful situation. If you're in Houston traffic or Dallas traffic or any major city and you just need to get over, you're relying on people to be kind and courteous to you. And when they're not kind and courteous to you, then that becomes a problem. So I think it's good to let people know that you are displeased with their actions so maybe they can contemplate and say, you know what, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Because if you just turn the other cheek, well, that could cause problems in the future because they think, okay, I got away scot-free with getting in front of that truck and trailer. Well, the next time I do it, there's not going to be any ramifications for that action either. And at some point, if you keep doing that, you're going to have an accident and you're going to put yourself and others at risk. I love how you said that. And it's a really good explanation, except for the fact that how many times have we had a conversation with anybody where they believe they didn't necessarily do anything wrong or they didn't think there was any wrong at all in what they were doing and or they didn't even understand what had just happened and couldn't even wrap their mind around it under any circumstance. So uh, you, those kind of people by honking the horn or yelling at them, hey, watch what you're doing. They're probably never gonna remember. Probably not. They're probably never gonna consider, oh, you know, I should probably be more courteous the next time. Probably not gonna do that either in a lot of cases. So should, if we survive this hypothetical traffic incident, should we even be mad or should we uh, have a more understanding like Sad Guru says, uh, you know, death is just like putting on your pants. It's just something you do. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> uh, can we get so disturbed by someone else's actions out of, out of mere ignorance? out of them just not knowing, even if it is dangerous. I think it is aggravating and frustrating for sure. I haven't got over that notion of, man, why are you acting and driving so stupid? Like, why are you doing that? But I don't get as mad as I used to, so let me pat myself on the back here, is that, uh, oh, F you, I hope you burn in hell. <laughs> it's like, no, there's none of that. Where there, where there used to be. So I think that we can't get to the, a point where you go, I'm not going to allow you to physically disturb my body by releasing all these hormones. I'm not going to let you physically, or not physically, but uh, mentally put stains on my day or my good mood. I just have to let it pass. Just, all right, that, that happened. That is what it is. So, poof, be gone. There's nothing I can do about it. It was totally out of my control. If it's totally out of my control, why in the world would I get upset about it? There's nothing I can do about it. I can't reverse time real quick and go pull off on the side of the road, pull the guy out and say, look, trucks are heavy. They can't stop like you do. You can't go give them an educational process before the event. 
you can't change them during the event and you're probably not going to change them right after the event by being aggravated and frustrated and you know flipping them off or, or something like that it, so with all that being being the case it, is it good to harbor these little pet peeves uh, I, I have a, a few of them that are with conscious work and effort, you can begin to realize their insignificance. Like so many things in our day, just naturally, or I think it's not naturally, but it has become a natural thing for us to get very frustrated with people for doing actions like cutting us off or for the way somebody talks. Like a lot of times people have a habit of repeating the same word over and over again. So we'll, we, they, that's an irritant or uh, somebody has a tapping, you know, that just drives me crazy. Uh, still, I haven't gotten over that one yet. You know? Well, you know, clicking a pen, that is one of those things that feels really good when you're doing it, but is terribly annoying to everyone around you. Nobody wants to hear that sound, but if you're making it, it's like, oh, that's, that's kind of pleasant. So, uh, you know, there are, pet peeves that, that are that probably warrant us to look at them and go wow i just should not allow myself to be this upset today when this person cuts me off or I, or this person's talking in a way that i don't really enjoy their uh, vocabulary or their tone or their height or their whatever but I, 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 to recognize that that gives us a level of understanding and communication with each other that, hey, in that particular instance, we're, we're growing together. Uh, in, the, in the instance of a road rage, nothing you can do about it, so why let it bother you? Even if it does cause an accident. I mean, it's going to be bothersome, you know, if somebody perishes, that's going to be a, a whole other problematic issue. But What about just personal pet peeves that only annoy you because you've brought up speech several times? There are not very many, but there's a couple things that I really do not like in language. For instance, uh, I have a niece that one of her favorite sayings and expressions that drives me absolutely insane is that's not fair. Well, I can't stand that because life is not fair. And especially for someone in her shoes, life's not fair and you're the beneficiary of it not being fair. You're a kid and you're 12 years old and you're wearing Nikes and you didn't have to go work 15 hours a day at a sweatshop to make those shoes. Life's not fair and you're the beneficiary of it. We don't live in the poorest parts of India across from Mumbai where there's a family of you know 10 or 12 living in a 10 by 10 shack with no running water or power. You don't have to get up and your parents work 12 hours a day in a sweatshop to produce iPhones or any clothing items. Life's not fair and you're the beneficiary of it. Well, is, is that necessary? Is it a pet peeve because you don't address her saying that, being a niece? Oh no, I definitely do address her saying that and I address anyone saying that around me and I explain it to them just like that. Does it solve the problem? Probably not, but I do feel like I'm giving them a little bit of education that maybe in a couple years, they'll be advanced enough in their thinking if you say it enough times that they're like, you know what? Maybe life's not fair, but who really gets the better end of that deal? Maybe I just realized that I have a pet peeve with you having pet peeves. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, everybody has a couple of pet peeves. I think it's fantastic that, uh, that we can recognize them. Because a lot of times we go through our day and we, we, we get all these little things like um, a guest of ours here uh, was talking uh, recently about how people talking behind each other's backs at, the, uh, at this mythical water cooler at work. You know, everybody's at work and they'll talk bad about people behind each other's back. I can see how that's a pet peeve. That, that's annoying. That, that is not pleasurable. But are some of these pet peeves easily solved? 
Like, can we just ignore them or can we address them right out and say, Hey guys, well, why are you talking about it? If you got something to say, just say it to their face. Otherwise, I don't want to be a part of this conversation. I think, yes, you can address many of your pet peeves. If they're coming from a point of rationality, or even if they're unrational. Like I know one of my mom's biggest pet peeves is not putting napkins in a plate, you know, when you eat at her house. Because you're getting food on a napkin and you throw it away and it makes the trash thing, you know, whatever. Like, I feel feel that's kind of a weird, unrational thing, but she handles it right out in the open. So, you know, don't do that at her house. That's like one of her rules. What, what is the rule again? Explain it to me now. Oh, you've had to hear her say this. I must have just completely ignored it. <laughs> okay, so when you're done eating, you know, you have your napkin that you'd wipe your face with or whatnot. Uh -huh. She finds it distasteful to put it in your plate. Oh, when you're finished eating. Finished oh, eating, yeah. which I can see that from different points of view like all right, especially if you're not the one cleaning your own dishes nobody wants to take the thing that you just wiped your nasty face with and then they have to deal with it and throw it in the trash you should be responsible for your own at least nasty face hole cleanup rag <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think so that's great i didn't know that was a pet peeve of my stepmom that's fantastic I, i'm going to test this out by putting a napkin on a plate <laughs> Let's yeah. see how far that takes me. See, that's just funny. I, I don't think I would do that. Well, I, well, I might just in fun, but uh, I, I don't think I think we take ourselves so seriously that that we allow ourselves to get disturbed and emotionally uptight over things that just should not make us upset at all. We just get too wound up and just the minutia of little bitty details that we should just not care less one way or the other. That is true, but there also has to be some things that have to be at the core of your belief system that you maybe not let go, but there's a reason for you having those pet peeves. Oh, for sure. You know, like you're getting very temporarily irritated by a small car pulling out in front of a heavy truck. I mean, that is, that's a justifiable sort of irritation. You're like, come on now. But it doesn't have to be something that overrides your, your your next hour or... It doesn't have to ruin your day. Right. And it doesn't have to set the tone with everybody around you with a negative base of energy. That, that doesn't need to do that either. But it can be a thoughtful process where you go, God, man, I just can't believe people don't understand the ramifications of their actions. But that goes to all things. But back to your point, it, of course there are boundaries and within you know all of us that you wouldn't necessarily even consider a pet peeve at that point. There's an understanding in our relationship that these things are acceptable, these other things are not. That's and then if you want to push those boundaries you do it at the detriment of that relationship or this group's rules or whatever that may be. That's not no longer, I don't think, a pet peeve so much as it is uh, maybe you're just not being respectful of that relationship or you don't no longer appreciate that relationship so you don't care. Same would go for a group or anything else. That takes the pet peeve to the whole new level of I don't agree with anything that we're talking about. Yeah, Cause then it goes from a personal pet peeve, especially when you're talking about it in a group context that you know that you're really trying to incite conflict, especially in that. Then it becomes from a pet peeve to almost a, a rule within your group or social society. Right. And, and, it, and does some of these pet peeves, are they a manifestation of our own internal combustion that is just waiting to escape you know like we're so frustrated with life already so whenever the car pulls out in front of us we're able to just blow off all that steam all the little things that are building up in our own lives we can just yell for you know two three seconds at joe blow pulling out in front of us that makes us feel better about our life and it's also a lot easier to be angry with somebody you have no contact with no relation with than to have 
conflict with somebody you deal with on a day to day basis. Yeah, that's a bit... it's easier to just blow off the top at road rage when you're really having a problem somewhere else. Some of those pet peeves, it's just a combine this little bit, this little bit, and then they pulled out in front of me. Especially say if you're doing low to hay, you know, maybe you've been driving all day and you're tired and somebody incites you. You're not really blowing up just at that certain situation. You're blowing up at everything leading up to it. You're stressed out. You're pulling this big trailer. It's your last load. You're trying to get it in before dark. After you get home, you know you got to unload it. Then you got to put the trailer back up. You got to fill it full of diesel for the next day. You got all these things that go into to consideration of what just made you mad. I think a lot of times when we consider our pet peeves, it's not necessarily the pet peeve, it's what the underlying conditions that made it your pet peeve. For me, especially when I'm talking about my niece, where it's, oh, life's not fair. Well, you're not considering all the things that you have in life that makes your life so great. So you're irritated that this little aspect didn't go your way. And that is one of the things that has turned it from really a pet peeve is to why are you letting this one little thing go your way or didn't go your way? Why are you speaking out against it so much when you've had all these other things that have gone right? Why can't you just see and understand that you have life so great? Even if things don't appear to be going your way, life on this planet is still pretty wonderful. Yeah, it is irritating when you have especially kids of this generation they're so pampered and coddled that they have a very entitled mentality i think perhaps with this uh event that has happened over the past two years they have a uh, their brains are being rewired to a whole different authoritarian complex which is sad but the The nature of being angry or irritated or put off by a kid, I think it should make us, instead of being a pet peeve, it is more of a, a contemplation. Like, why do these kids think that way? It goes, it's a step beyond a pet peeve. It's, wow. How can you feel like no, this life's not fair when you've given, you've gotten every opportunity in front of you. You've gotten food, you have a house to sleep in, you have clothes to wear, and you're young, so you have, theoretically you have time to make all the decisions you want to weave out the tapestry of your own life yeah, that, that becomes more contemplative than a pet peeve. It actually becomes very problematic as a societal construct as a whole because it's happening everywhere. But just a guy sitting there tapping his pencil on a desk, that's annoying. We should just ask him to stop instead of saying, oh my God, you know, on the inside of your head, oh my God, I hate this guy for tapping on the desk. <laughs> Will you stop it? Stop. <laughs> you know, it's just, hey man. <laughs> yeah, would you please yeah. not mind doing that? Yeah, and then all of a sudden you never got upset about anything. Instead, we just tolerate the guy sitting there tapping his pen, annoying the heck out of everybody at the table <laughs> or whatever. A lot of people are like that. You know, like I, I saw a guy, we were having dinner uh, a couple of weeks ago in Jefferson. And for those of you who don't know, Jefferson, Texas is like one of the coziest, quaint, communities beautiful downtown it's fantastic highly recommend jefferson texas about 20 minutes from here we're having dinner and i know it's a pet peeve of mine that is a it's not so much a pet peeve now because i've thought about it but our waiter came to the table he has a huge booger it's a huge booger in his nose and all these other people have seen it. And nobody tells the guy. Like nobody, except for me. I got. I was like, hey man, you got a huge bugger hanging out of your nose. And he was so thankful. He, he wasn't like, oh, I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe it. He was like, oh, thanks, man. 
And I was just like, what is wrong with all you people? Y'all can't tell this guy he has these four or five tables he's serving. Everybody sees it. And everybody is, is uh, makes a little snicker or talks behind the guy's back. I'm like, you rude bunch of people. Just tell the poor fella, hey, pick your pick, pick your nose there, man. You, 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 we don't want that to fall on our plate when you bring when you bring out our dinner. <laughs> just, just those simple little things of courtesy, I think, are the underlying aspect of all of our pet peeves. A little lack of thought from either the other person and ourselves allow us to have all these moments in the day or through life that are unnecessary. Like people not telling the guy he had a booger. Like, come on, be courteous. Be polite. Not pulling out in front of somebody. Hey, I'm not going to do that. Tapping the pencil. I'm going to be aware. It all, everything goes back to being aware of what you're doing and to be to be alive in such a way that you, you contemplate or you consider how your actions may be negatively affecting somebody else. And if they are, and it's something that you can easily avoid, then just don't do it. Just don't do it. Seems simple enough. Just, just practice that a little bit. You know, from the mystics of Texas, that's just a little Texas philosophy. Just, just ease it on out. It's going to be okay. I don't need to get mad at you pulling out in front of me. But if I see you somewhere, instead of getting out the old-fashioned Texas way and, and stomp a mud hole in his ass, just talk to hey man, I don't know if you've ever driven a trailer before, but these things are heavy. I can't stop on a dime. I'd hate to have to accidentally have hit you. Those kind of things. Or talking to your uh, niece. <laughs> Come on now. Look where you live. Look how much love you have in your life. Look at all these people that want to spend time with you. Do you think like you think this is unfair? It could be a lot more unfair. It could be a lot more unfair. I think a lot of this is really it comes down to I mean most of it's back to the golden rule especially on pet peeves like tapping the thing even people that click their pen know that that's annoying if someone else does it like they know these things and sometimes it's you know just unconscious oh I'm just nervous fidgeting energy and then if somebody asks you to stop oh well I'm sorry I did that or you pull out in front of a truck and they stop you hey man I'm sorry I didn't really I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Or I passed you in a no passes zone. Man, that was me being, I think if we think and look at most of our actions throughout the day and how can they affect us and other people and are these things really worth getting upset and angry about, really just more self-reflection in our day-to-day -day life would go a long way to just how people deal with each other and situations. Man, I think so, too. I think you worded that really greatly. So the end point of this whole conversation is there are a lot of ways to get aggravated and have a bunch of pet peeves, but with a little bit of thought, a little bit of contemplation, we can address those things and make them all right. And that's the point. Life's too short to allow things to swell and bull up, and we're not all made out of We're not teapots, but we act like teapots. So... Let's just take the lid off and, and just let the steam constantly blow up, you know, blow away instead of having it covered up, ready to explode. I think that's the uh, that's the lesson and takeaway from the old infamous mystics of Texas. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed our video today. You can catch us on all the alternatives: Rumble, Odyssey, Bit Shoot, and have a good day.